Hi everybody, it's Diane. I am about to start work on the next Christmas journal. I'm doing a bunch of them this year and they are so different. I've done a domestic art style journal. I've done a fabric quilted one, um, a religious one, um, a Frosty the Snowman, and I've just been all over the place with journals. And now this is going to be another different style of journal. And it's made with this vintage book of A Christmas Carol. The cover is worn pretty badly along the bottom here. And um, the rest of it's not too bad. So, and the, the gilding is faded. And I was thinking of possibly using my gold, oops, my gold paint pen and kind of drawing inside of all of these. It would be tedious, but if it looked good, it would be worth it. So I started it down here and it's not going to do a good job. In fact, this paint is duller than the gilding that's in there. And then it's a fabric cover. And so the, the paint kind of, um, what do you call it? Bled into the fabric and so it wouldn't be a sharp image. So I'm gonna leave that the way it is, but you can see that it's so old that it looks kind of dingy here, but it's just a vintage book. Um, let me see if I can find a year. I saved some of the pages. I think one of these, um, 1938. So it's pretty old. There's some nice um, illustrated pages that I saved. And the end papers and fly leaves are fabulous. So I'd like to use those. The book measures... Um, seven and a quarter wide by nine and a half inches tall. So it's a good size. Um, I also have, these are the pages, the papers that I have set aside. Not that. Um, I chose music that I thought would go with the uh, period. Good King Wenceslas, I chose. Um, and this is an image that it just reminds me of that period of time. Maybe it's a little more modern, this, this image, but he looks like he could be in A Christmas Carol. And of course, this is a uh, Norman Rockwell piece of art. And this guy, this could be uh, Fezziwig, <clears throat> Scrooge's first boss. That's not from this period. <laughs> and this one, I love this one. That's Mr. and Mrs. Fezziwig dancing at the Christmas party. That's, that's what I call They're not really, but that's what I call them. Then I just have some notepad sheets that I thought would look nice in this journal. And some computer paper. This card, I believe someone sent this to me some time ago. But it's got Christmas is coming, a little rhyme some line paper. We have the holly and the ivy. Here we come a wassailing, which I associate with this time period. Some more computer paper. And some cards. Grandmother's eggnog and macaroon dream or creams. Just some recipes and a recipe book, some wrapping paper. I chose some images from Tsunami Rose, left over from last year, that I might use. I might, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'll use all of these, but I got this one this year, um, well before Christmas, but I had discovered Antique Papery because of, um, I think it was Rachel from Roxy Creations um, introduced us to her, or at least me, um, and I love her collage look. So I had bought something from her, some a digital kit, but I also went ahead and got this. So I had already printed these. It's a good thing because I would have forgotten that I had bought these because it was a while ago. So I, there's one. I don't even know what the name of the kit is. Two. 
three, four, five, six pages in this kit. So that's great, I can use two pages per signature. Then just some scrapbook paper that I have. So I think I have enough here. I can add uh, some ledger paper or something like that if I need to add more. Copy dyed paper. Um, oh, I have these wonderful little cards, which I'm going to add into this journal. And of course, some playing cards. So what I want to do right now, oh, and I kept, and I have this quote from Mrs. Coggs, and it's from Dickens, it's from this story. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all year. So that will have to go in there in a prominent place. What I'd like to do is kind of decorate this, um, give it some oomph. I do love the gilding around it, but you can see here the red is showing through quite a bit right there, so I was thinking of covering up this part, and I want to cover where it's worn there. So I have this red and green plaid fabric with a little bit of gold thread in it, and I thought I would just wrap it around the bottom. And I will add uh, metal corners on the edges, on the corners of this book. So I'm just going to put some Fabri-Tac on here. I was planning on putting it on the top and bottom of each cover, but I'm not sure if I will. I'm going to do it to the <coughs> to the bottom and see how I like it. Now when I, I cut this fabric, the I must have cut it right on the edge where there was a gold thread because the gold thread came out it's right there. I brought some pieces over, some vintage crochet pieces and some vintage buttons and I, a little bit of vintage lace. So I'm just going to play and see how I can make the cover look prettier. What's the latest you think I should have a um, Christmas journal ready to put in my shop? You think it's too late if I if they're not done by December 1st? I don't know. I don't use a Christmas journal. Um, if you're using it for a December daily, you're going to want it in your hands by December 1st. But maybe you just want to keep track of the holidays, you know, like the, like the last couple of weeks before Christmas when all the festivities happen. So I don't know because I was thinking of trying to get this book done because I love the look of the vintage Santas um, and I think this will make an adorable journal but I don't know if it uh, if it will be too late. If I get this one done um, before the end of November then you know it would be into December when I get the other one get when I make the Santa journal so I'm curious if you think that would be too late if anybody would buy it so I don't know if I'm gonna put this strip on there let me grab some corners so I can see how they look I have these I get these from Amazon and they're planer or I have these fancier ones. Some of these are, there's two different types. There's this one with the little inset and then there's this one. And I can't remember which is which, but one is Tim Holtz and one is Recollections. But I want a gold color because of the gold in the cover itself. This is kind of a muted gold.
I'm not sure which one looks better. I think I actually like the plain one better. I use these more than the uh, fancier ones. But I only see them in this color. I don't see them in any other metal, but that's okay. I usually I usually like using this color of metal, so that's fine. All right, now I have some options for here. Um, I was thinking about just putting this down as a decoration. Or maybe doing some sort of a collage of lace or um, crochet and stuff. These pretty buttons I can play with. That one is so vintage it blends right in. It's supposed to be white. This one is whiter, but this one got really dingy. That one shows up a little better. Oh, that would be cute. And then there will be um, some fabric of some sort over here as I make the binding, the spine. I am not going to fuss too much. I'm just going to start gluing down because I think that looks okay, and I hope you agree. Um, this book is wider, um, what did I say, seven and a quarter or something like that. And of course a 12 by 12 sheet of paper is only going to be six inches when you fold it. So I don't know if I'm going to patch a couple pieces together or just put some wider lace on the front of it or something to make it extend out a little more. We'll see as we go along. I've gotten quite a bit of this fab of this lace with a flea market find, and I've been using it a lot lately, and I love it. So I still have that much left, still quite a bit there. So 
So I could use that. I forgot to try some of the smaller ones that I brought over. Brought this one over. Maybe that looks better. Maybe something in between. I'm coming back, don't worry. Just trying to find the right size of something. Making a mess of my drawer over here. Okay, I'm coming. Sorry about that. So I have this round one, which I think looks better than this. And I have this one. This one looks better. And I have this that I could cut. I think I like this one. Okay, we're going to go for it. Today, the day that I'm making this video, it's Monday. I think that the day it will publish to my channel will be Thursday, which will be Thanksgiving here in the United States. And I will be making a turkey dinner for my children and grandchildren, but we can't eat till five o'clock because my daughter has to work. So we'll have a a late dinner, but many families eat their Christmas or Thanksgiving dinners at in, for the evening meal. I myself prefer to have it done early for a couple of reasons. One, so that the work is done and I can relax. The meal is cooked and the dishes are done and the leftovers are in the refrigerator. Which brings me to the second reason, leftovers for dinner. <laughs> That's okay. I'll just have something light for lunch and then we'll have our dinner at 5 o'clock and we'll have leftovers the next day. So I'll have mine and I'll send some home with the kids. And uh, I'm using glossy accents for this and for the button. I think it works well for embellishments like this. If I can get it to squeeze out Since I got Fabri-Tac, I don't use the glossy accents as much as I used to, so it's a little harder to get it to work when I do use it. But now it's coming out. Now this is not going to be lying flat. It's going to be laying on this three-dimensional stuff, so I'm hoping I'm going to get it to stick well. And glossy accents does not dry as quickly some of these other glues that we use. I'm going to lay this punch down on it to kind of hold it down there. Hopefully that's holding it down well enough. And I might be able to cut a little bit more off of that shank. Oh. 
Oh yeah, that went flying. Might not get any more. But I will put the glue around the rim of the button. I just didn't want this to hold the button up off of the book cover. So I wanted to cut it down closer. Yeah, that's lying down there nice. All right. I think I might put a little thin lace along the edge of that plaid fabric. See if I can find a thin piece of lace. Oh, I think this one might be perfect for it. I need something heavier to hold that down. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and put something heavy on top of that. Put some books on top of it. And then we'll revisit it once that little figure is glued down there good see if we need to do anything else to the cover. Let's check this cover out. That's not bad. I wonder why the front bottom was so bad. These aren't bad. So I'll have to see if I want to add fabric to those just to make it all uniform. I might not want to, but I can go ahead and put these corners on. I'm not going to add another paper to the back. So I can go ahead and do this now. I'll just pound that down with my little hammer. I don't know what kind of fabric I'm going to put on the spine. I haven't chosen that yet. But I can work on signatures. Um, I just wanted to make sure I could make the cover look decent before I went ahead and made the signatures. And I think that with those added crochet pieces and lace and things that it's going to look like a decent cover. want to add just a little bit of um, collage on the back too. Yeah, 
You can see how it's got watermarks or something on it. It's stained. Some of this will be covered by the spine fabric, but not all of it. I might want to put a little piece of crochet up here to cover that spot that looks worse, but I don't mind this. I don't really like the looks of that. So I'll wait till I get the spine made and then see what I want to do here and see maybe I can build a little collage right there. So, I'll set this aside and I'll start working on some pages. I'm going to put my little other corners on top of that little drawer box right there. And then I won't remember where they are when I want them. Isn't that what I do? I had cut one of the 12 by 12 pages, this one, down to the right height so I could see how it fit width, width wise. And there is a little over an inch of space there. Well, an inch. There's an inch of space. So I think what I'll do is just add a bit of a wider lace than I normally would rather than adding to the piece of paper. So I'm going to go through these. I want to use these in the book if I can. And then I want to look through these and see what I want to include. Look at that illustration. Everett Shin. S-H-I-N-N. -N. Or is it Swin? I think it's an H. I like that one. And this is a folio, so I can reinforce that and then make the trim the edges and have that nice full page in there. That's great. There he is with the ghost of Christmas future. I wonder if there's any more folio pages. Of course, I can hinge them together. Ghost of Christmas Present. Well, there's no ghost there, but that's from a scene from the present. Yep. Oh, wait. Here's... I want to use this one. There's Mr. and Mrs. Fezziwig. We love to watch um, A Muppet Christmas Carol. And they were... Fozziewig and his mother, Mrs. Fozziewig. <laughs> I think in the book they're a married couple. This is the ghost of Christmas past. I'm going to put her in there. I guess there's no more folios, but maybe I can hinge some together. Yeah, those are some really good pages that I can use. I want at least one in each signature. So I'll use him, or them, and I'll use that one. Oh, there's another folio page, and that doesn't have the big full color pictures. Yeah, Shin. I've read Shin. And there's Bob Cratchit with Tiny Tim. I'll have to put that in there. I'll put it like that.
to do. these two in also. I think I need to include as many of those really beautiful color pictures as I can. I'm not going to try to keep them in any order. I'm not trying to tell a story here. This isn't the story of Christmas Carol. This is a journal made with illustrations from a Christmas Carol. I have one, two, three, four, five sets. I need one more so I can have two in each signature. So I will use this fly leaf and this one. It has the date on the back and the name of the illustrator. And the name of the author since I covered up his name on the front cover. going to take some strips of paper. I cut them to about one inch and these will be my hinges or reinforcement strips. I cut them to about one inch wide and then to the height of the paper. I guess I got two out of that. Just have to see who this text is. daughter's just sending me some ideas for Teddy for his birthday, but or Christmas I mean, but I think I'm all done buying for him. I think so, because I bought him something that costs a little more than, usually I'll buy them two or three, but if I spent quite a bit on the gift that I got him, so that might be the only one he gets.
I want to see how they fit widthwise. Oh, that's good. Probably didn't need to trim off as much as I did, but that's okay. So I'm going to put some tape on this strip of paper. Double-sided tape. You can use glue. Can't use that backwards. Um, then I'm going to lay these out using my grid here to line them up. Pretty close together. And I will light, lay this down. Oh! Right across the seam. tape sticking off the edge there, so I'll just rub that off. And I'll fold it over and make a crease in, in that um, strip of paper. So now I have a folio that I can sew into the book. tape showing on that side too because there's a little bit of a gap tiny 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 gap between the pages I didn't want them crumpling up together now I will reinforce one of the folios that's already still together this one see it's still together but there are holes where the stitches were, so I definitely would not sew it into the signature like that. So I will take the same paper this one I don't have to line up because it's already put together I don't have to worry about that. And I'll just lay it there. So I created a folio and I reinforced a folio. A folio is two sheets of paper that are connected like this. Okay, and I will continue that with these pages. Let me grab the, um, the front cover and see how we're doing with that. That appears to be glued down quite nicely. So there's our front cover. Let's see if we want to do the top part with this or not.
I don't think I do. I will just add the corners before I lose them. And while my glossy accents is still hopefully flowing freely, and it is. Oh, that's going to be a problem because I can't lay it flat now. So, I'm going to get one of my jewelry tools. I can't pound it flat because I can't lay the book flat. But, I can take my tweezer or pliers and squeeze it. make uh, more folios with these pages off camera. There is a little piece of chipboard stuck in the hole there. It's, um, I don't know how, because there was a thread through that hole to hang it as an ornament, and I took the thread out, but there's a little piece of chipboard where the hole wasn't completely open, and I don't like it there. That's kind of cute. I'll just prep a few more pages here. These are going to have to be sideways in the book. Maybe I'll be able to put this one near the uh, book illustration of Mr. and Mrs. Fezziwig dancing at the Christmas party. Such a charming picture. This is a Hallmark card illustration that Norman Rockwell did. I do love this picture. It's not of the right era, but I might just leave it in there. This is an uh, advertisement for Parker Penn. I can leave it in the book and then whoever gets the book can cover it up if they want to.
some music paper. Antique papery papers. It's going on eight o'clock. I worked today and then I went right to my daughter's house to help her with some stuff. We had lunch together and then we worked together on stuff at her house and then we chatted for a while. So it was just after five when I got home. I didn't get to do anything around the house. I should have been doing laundry. Didn't get my laundry done. Yeah, I'll have chance, a chance to do that tomorrow. We are going to meet for lunch tomorrow, too, at this little restaurant that I like here in here where I live. And it's not a chain. It's called Callier's, and they do, um, they're famous for pork barbecue, but I love their barbecued chicken. So I mentioned that today that I hadn't been there in a long time. It's it's right next to Walmart, but it's um, well, it's not right next, but just go up the road a tiny bit and turn. It's not right on the road where you see it and are reminded of it every day. <clears throat> so I forget about it, but I love their chicken and their sweet corn nuggets. So I mentioned it today that I was thinking about it, and they're closed on Mondays. I couldn't go today. So she's off tomorrow, and she thought maybe we could meet there when I'm done working tomorrow and have some lunch. But then I have to come home and do some of my own chores. how tall I cut this. Nine inches. That makes it easy. Nine inches. I like to have my pages selected and cut to feel like I've really started on the journal. <laughs> I've got my Christmas shopping done for the grandkids, but not for my adult kids. I have a couple things bought, but they're hard to buy for. When your kids become adults, they're hard to buy for. Especially the guys. pages we have so far. We'll have two of the pages from the book, two folios of that in each signature. Have one of these in each signature. So that's three pages. Two of these. Three, four, five, six, 
see how many scrapbook papers we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to put three of these in each signature. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, seven, eight. One of these pages for each signature. Oh, and music too. Did I count the music? Yes, I did. Okay, I counted the music. One, two, three. This is a